What's up guys, Wartik here with another Marvel Psych Force video and in this video we are back to talk about Dark Dimension 8 and we're gonna take a look at which are the characters that are absolute cheat codes for Dark Dimension 8. These are characters that are going to be extremely powerful for you to use and that will allow you to progress in Dark Dimension 8 very very fast and also give you a very smooth experience. This is great because, I'm going to be honest, there are a few places in Dark Dimension 8 where we have uh, extremely difficult enemies to deal with. And if you're not going to take these characters, you're going to struggle a lot more and make the experience a lot less pleasant. So, in this video, we're going to mention all the characters that uh, you need to know in order for you to consider gearing up. And uh, I'm also going to show you the plan that I made, made for uh, my account and uh, the experience that I had on my first run with a maxed out team and then using my own account where my characters are not maxed out. So we're going to break down all the information in this video. And as always, if you like the information on these videos, make sure to share it to your friends on Facebook and Discord. If you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe for more Mouse Strike Force content and make sure you smash the like button like a boss. OK, so who's an absolute boss? Is me, of course. Uh, we got uh, rank 13 on uh, the first run that I did. I ran it with uh, Falker's account. He asked me if I wanted to, to run for it. And I said, yes, of course, I'm going to use this opportunity to do so. And uh, this was good. It was good. We learned a lot. Unfortunately, we were not able to get to top 10 because we had some technical difficulties. Uh, the emulator was not working, and because of that, we started half of our later. So yeah, it was half of our was just too much time. So we were not able to get top ten. Maybe next time we'll. But uh, for now, that's it. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the perspective of uh, using uh, an account maxed out where you can run in our dimension, and then my account right now where I cannot run because I don't have the maxed out characters and I don't have all the characters available. You can see right now, I'm on rank 1300 and something, and this is the city villains. I already have uh, the global heroes prepared, and I also have the legendary cosmic prepared as well. So the only thing that is missing is the global villains. Okay, so with this in mind, let's take a look at the characters that I'm gonna take, and the options, the options that we have, and some alternative options if you don't have these characters. Now, for City Hero, the most important characters are going to be the three Spider Society characters. And uh, then we have two slots. On those two slots, you can plug and play or uh, the other Spider Society characters, Ghost Spider or Spider-Man Water. Or you can plug and play like whichever other character. I took a Robbie Race and I took Hard Light. Some people said that, uh, oh no, they, they suck. They don't suck. Y you suck. Like, <laughs> they do fine. So you could see that, like, the, so I, I one shot the first node with Hard Light and Robbie Race, and the second node I did four attacks. So this is two, di two days with the two resets. And, and that's fine, guys. Like, you, you want more than these? It's really not necessary. If you are running for the first 30 days where you can get 700 stars on Odin, this is more than enough. Why would you waste your gear on characters that are not as relevant just to, to have the full synergies? It's really not necessary. You just have to make the, the proper decisions. Of course, that if you are playing with Spider Society full team, it's very different on how you play it with this hybrid team. But overall, this team is just a better investment. And this is the difference that I want to make. When you are running for top 10, you want to use uh, the characters with the highest levels of synergy. If it's not the case, if you are not running for top 10, then you want to invest on the characters that have the most value for your account. And Robbie Race and Hard Light, they are still amazing in Cosmic Crucible. They are still amazing in Alliance Wars. So, of course, I'm going to prioritize them over characters like Ghost Spider or Spider-Man Noir which have questionable value, right? Even Spider Society as a whole have questionable value. They are right now part of uh, the raid teams. Sure, they are part of the spotlight raids. That's fine. 
and they are good in alliance wars because they have all these bonuses but next season they will not have those bonuses and uh, with all these CT characters that are coming and with Null coming to the game we don't know for sure how much value Spider Society is going to hold so this is why you have to be careful right invest on the three main ones and uh, maybe skip the other ones now something else that we have to also take into consideration is that uh, Penny should always be the strongest character on your spider society so your team gets a lot of energy if that's not the case if uh, ghost spider or spider-man noir are stronger then uh, your raid teams might stop working just because you don't have enough energy so this is a good way to gear penny up and leave the others behind so you, you still have the highest value on penny because once again she's really the most important character on the team because of the energy generation so overall this was a good uh, team for me other options you could use Gwenum. she's part of the hive mind she's a symbiote with no coming maybe she's going to get some additional value as well and uh, the symbiotes the bigger they are the better because you're gonna you're gonna get more speed bar and so on beyond that uh, there are a few characters here that are useful like uh, spider-man big time firestar uh, bm noir 2099 uh, ghost spider uh, but I mean, if you are mentioning these characters, you could also mention Gwenpool or uh, or Robin or uh, Cloak or uh, whichever. Like we have a few characters here that are somewhat useful. We also have Moon Knight that got absolutely shafted with the rework of um, Night Stalkers. So sure, yeah, we have some characters here that have some value. But in my opinion, the most value will go for Robbie Rice and uh, Arlight. Arlight still soft counters. Apocalypse, she still soft counters characters with empowered abilities like Mephisto. So I don't think she's going anywhere. And Robbie Ray is like the guy is, is not going anywhere for sure with all the, the speed bar bleeds, ability blocks, and he's super fast. So I still think that the team I took is the best investment if you are not running for top 10. Moving on for City Villains, I took a full Sinister Six on the speed run. And I also talk uh, for the normal account. Some of these characters are even geared 18, and that's fine. They have been doing fine so far. But you need to take the full team, otherwise you're not going to be able to activate all their abilities. Uh, you need uh, at least two superior six to activate the abilities of uh, Vulture and Mysterio. But then uh, there are specific abilities of Graven that you need two superior six as well. And th this is why the full team is... It should be your option. Now, in terms of other options, some people consider taking the, the, the symbiotes. Sure, we have null coming. Maybe that's going to be something good for the future. But I don't think they have insane amount of value overall. And uh, it requires you to have a, a big Venom as well. And not everyone invested on Venom. And especially because he's expensive. So it's definitely something I wouldn't prioritize. Focus on your Sinister Six and you'll be fine. Now, we have uh, Hero Global. So for Hero Global, the best option would be for you to take uh, the Illuminati team. Some people talk uh, the, the X-Men. The X-Men didn't perform very well because we are facing multiple characters that are like um, Orkies, and Orkies have counters against mutants. So that's something to avoid. The character you want to take for sure, absolute cheat code in Dark Dimension is Spider Weaver. I remember in the previous Dark Dimensions, Dark Dimension 6 and Dark Dimension 7, I always said that Spider Weaver was must-have. And of course, the, the envoys, the content creators, they always said that I was wrong. Quicksilver, much better. This guy, other guys, much, much better. And now everyone talks Spider Weaver, right? Because of course, she's amazing. She was always amazing. And uh, a lot of people prioritized her over Quicksilver, which is, of, of course, the best option. The other characters, uh, Hank Pym and Shuri, they have a lot of value in Cosmic Crucible, they have a lot of value in Alliance Wars, so you should take them. Nightcrawler here is also a good option. He has a stun, he extends your buffs. He can apply Evade to the team, and then Spider Weaver can spread that Evade with her special, so that's a good combo that you can make. And the last character, if you have Captain Britain, of course you want to take Captain Britain. If you don't have Captain Britain, you could consider or Gambit or Black Knight or Forge to revive uh, 
and heal up uh, the, the team a little bit, not a lot. Uh, you, have, you have a few options. You could take Quicksilver as the last option because every time he dies, he's going to bring your... He's going to have full cooldowns available again. But uh, overall, you actually don't have a lot of good characters. And this is because they are part of the old meta, right? They have the old stats. And because of that, uh, in Dark Dimension 8, they are not going to be very effective. Even characters like uh, the, the Alpha Flight... They are not going to perform very well because they most of their abilities are in Alliance Wars or in Raids. So they're going to feel like Luster. And then we have Black Knight. Black Knight, sure, it's a good investment if you don't have uh, Captain Britain. Uh, but once again, don't forget all the op options of Gambit, Quicksilver, and, uh, and someone else that I, I don't remember. But yeah, Black Knight is the one I'm going to take. Because I forgot about uh, <laughs> Nightcrawler. But Nightcrawler is definitely one of the best options, especially if you are taking Spider River. So keep that in mind. Then we have uh, Global Villains. And for Global Villains, on the time I'd run, I use uh, the, the Orkis team. It was good. I one shot at all the nodes, but I didn't enjoy the gameplay. And uh, I'm uncertain about the value of Orkis in Alliance Wars and uh, in Cosmic Crucible. Scientist Supreme, in those game modes, she's fine, she has some usefulness, but uh, Nimrod, Omega Sentinel, and uh, Sentinel, I'm just not sure. We also have Agatha rework coming up very soon, so that's sh something you could consider. She has a stun, she gives energy to herself, which will allow you to stun multiple targets. Then uh, she also has Drain, so she could be a good option for uh, Villain Global. The characters you want to take for sure is Apocalypse, right? Apocalypse must have, Lady Strike must have. And then you can take Full Cabal or you can take Leader and Iron Patriot and then take Daken. Daken is very important because he flips buffs, he applies slow, he does a lot of damage, especially together with the Leader because the Leader gives him more crit damage. And uh, Daken really claps when he's together with the Leader. And the fact that you only have two Cabal characters, it means that you always get the assist of Iron Patriot, which Iron Patriot has a lot of good effects when he assists. So this would be a good option for sure. If you're not going to take Orkis, once again, Orkis is fine. You're going to be able to one-shot the nodes. I just didn't enjoy the gameplay. But if you like to have your Ray teams as maxed as possible instead of your War teams or your Crucible teams, then go for Arkis instead with, uh, with Apocalypse. And the last section we have is Legendary or Cosmic. And for this section, if you have Mephisto, you should take Mephisto. If you have Thanos, you should take Thanos. If you have Old Man Logan, you should take Old Man Logan. If you have Scroll, you could take Scroll. Scroll is optional, but Scroll is still useful because of the extra HP he gives. And Val is absolute must have. Val is actually a cheat code. I was using Val. And uh, Dorky Dad was using Gladiator. And after he saw the, the value of Val, he stopped using Gladiator. He geared up Val and he started to use Val as well. And she is absolute monster in uh, Dark Dimension 8. But together with Thanos, Thanos applies Expose. Scroll applies Expose. Val applies Expose. And that it means that Thanos will generate energy for the entire team. And Val will generate energy to herself. So this means you can spam her ultimate very often. And uh, that's going to be absolute must-have. The cosmic legendary nodes are very difficult. And without Val, it is almost impossible. There are a few other characters that you could consider instead of Scroll or instead of Mephisto. But uh, I would not really focus on it. You absolutely want to have Scroll with two heroes and two villains. So you could consider or Cosmic Strider or um, the Void Knight, uh, the Gladiator and uh, the between Gladiator and uh, Gore. Gore is preferable. Green Goblin is stronger, but without Doctor Octopus is not very good. So you should go for something like a Black Cat instead. For heroes, you could also consider consider Nova. Uh, Kang is fine, but um, be careful between Kang and Morgan Le Fay or Omega Red. You'd be better with the latter. 
Uh, you could also take the two Eternals. So, I mean, you have a few options here, but uh, you really don't want to deviate too much from these, these five characters. Val, once again, must have. Mephisto must have. Uh, Old Man Logan, extremely useful. Thanos, pretty much must have for the energy. And Super Scroll, not must have, but very nice to have. So, these are, are the characters that you should take. And these are the cheat codes. Once again, Val, absolute cheat code. Spider Weaver, absolute cheat code. Nightcrawler, very useful as well. The Three Piece Spider Society. Apocalypse with the uh, Lady Death Strike. Okay, so now just to end the video, let's talk about the isolate that I like for each of them. So for the the, the C tier section, I gave Striker only to Penny Parker. Everyone else skirmisher. I think this guy is a healer, but you should make all of them skirmishers. This is extremely important because a lot of enemies spawn with immunity or with taunt. And you need to flip those immunities and towns. Very, very important. The damage output is not... Uh, the damage output is fine. The uh, damage output is just not necessary. You just have to focus on the utility. Generating energy and so on. But, uh, for example, if you if use Robbie Reyes as a striker, if you use him as a striker there, it's fine too. Don't worry about it. So, skirmisher, skirmisher, striker, skirmisher, striker. In terms of the Sinister Six... I use the Lizard as a Skirmisher. If you use him as a Raider, that's fine too. The enemies are not very difficult. So you could use the Raider for more vulnerabilities. Spider Slayer Striker, Craven Striker, Vulture Skirmisher, and Mysterious Skirmisher as well. You want to make sure that you apply the Slow and the Offense down with the Vulture. In terms of Global Hero, you want to take Spider Weaver as a Striker because there are a lot of characters that revive. And you want to make sure that uh, she uses her attacks to kill the enemies, especially the isolate attack, because after they cannot be revived. Nightcrawler, he, he must be a raider. And uh, then uh, this, this character's Illuminati, it might be a little bit controversial what I'm going to say. But Hank Pym as a striker is very good, because he will give 15% barrier for all the characters. All hero characters, he gives 15% barrier. So... Hank Pym as a striker can be quite powerful. Some people use him as a healer. He actually has no healing mechanics. He has like one heal on the ultimate, but has a long cooldown. He has a minor heal on the special, but he, he just does not heal enough to be relevant. And that's why I'm using him as a striker, because you are still healing, but you're also giving 50% barrier, which is absolutely massive. Shuri, I'm using her as a raider as well to apply vulnerabilities. You could use her as a striker. And then uh, the, the Captain Britain, I'm using him as a skirmisher because you need to make sure that you apply the stuns on the enemies. That's extremely important. The defense up and deflex that he gives with the basic, you can also give them with the Nightcrawler special or with Spider River special. So that's why we can afford to have Captain Britain as a skirmisher. In terms of the villains, villain global, apocalypse striker, lady death strike or skirmisher or striker or raider, if user as a raider together with cabal is great as well. Uh, this guy that can raider for sure. The leader you want to use him as a striker because he heals up and clears negative effects. And iron patriot you can use him as a skirmisher. Finally we have Mephisto as a striker, old man Logan skirmisher, uh, Thanos as a striker. Scroll as a raider and a Val, you can use it as a raider or as a striker because once again, the only thing that really matters is their damage output. So yeah, guys, those are the characters. Those are the the isolates you should use in case you want to use you in case you want to have a fast run in Dark Dimension Eight, and not only fast but also without uh, headaches. Believe me, there are a lot of places here that are gonna give you a lot of headaches, and this is how you can avoid it. So that's going to be the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. And if you found the video helpful, make sure to share it with your friends on Facebook and Discord. If you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe for more Mouse Strike Force content. And I'll catch you guys later.